Yo, Darius Britt here. We're gonna do something a little different. I shot a short film and recorded the whole thing from start to finish. If you wanna peek into another filmmaker's process, then maybe you'll find this useful. A little backstory. I got an email from the guys over at Aperture. They wanted me to shoot a short film as a sample video for their film competition. The rules. I'll shoot a short film that takes place in one location. And by one location, I mean, if you're shooting in a house, it must be one room in that house. Make a floor plan for your lighting scheme and make a BTS video. Okay, only one problem. I have 11 days to do it. If I'm gonna pull this off, the story's gotta be something simple. I had like a half cooked idea about somebody making a peanut butter jelly sandwich for somebody else. Gonna go with that for now. I was developing another short film project with Kate and Gabby and I figured why not just cast them for now because I really don't have time to go looking for actors. I need to be shooting like yesterday. Location. I don't have time to look for location so we're just gonna film at Kate's place. I'll make it work. <laughs> So what we could do instead is pre-light and rehearse it and just be all on the same page. Could you uh, sit right there? Maybe we'll move the couch. What's up, Gabs? You got the right place. Maybe if we just do this and we never see the whole room. Yeah, this looks way better. I wasn't really big in the side lighting, so I moved the furniture around. And I want both of my actors backlit by the sun. I bounced an Aperture LS1 LED panel off the ceiling for the first setup. I like the quality of the light, but not the direction. It just didn't look natural. See here, the light hits our actors from above, but this isn't mimicking how sunlight would behave naturally if it were actually coming through that sliding glass door. Basically, it looks lit. I don't want that. So I dropped the light sources to the ground and wouldn't you know, it looks so much better. Story. When I'm shooting micro films, I like to pull my actors into the story development process. I do this for three reasons. One, it's faster. You can brainstorm ideas together and like weed through the bad ideas right there on the spot. Two, saves time on set. You don't have to explain as much when you're shooting. The actors already know what the deal is, right? Cause they were there, they were part of the process. Three, sometimes you get some dope ideas that you never would have thought of by yourself. I guess story would be over at that point. Like there's no more story. It's like here, make it yourself and then you just walk Maybe off. Maybe it's more of a, sh okay, show me how you want it. I'm thinking it doesn't need to have a twist ending, but it would be nice to have some kind of button. We threw some ideas around. I'm gonna pick the ones that make the most sense and then I'm gonna write the script later. Even if you don't have like a slider or dolly on hand, you can still mimic the movement. This way when you're planning out shots, you can still give yourself like an idea of what the shot might look like. Whenever we get to the peanut butter and jelly handoff, I get problems. No matter what angle I shoot it from visually, it just feels kind of awkward and I'm not really sure what it is. I adjusted the block and covered it from several different angles and I still wasn't really finding what I was looking for. I'm gonna have to just think about it. This might seem really silly or trivial, but it's actually little things like this that trip you up. So we're done for the day and we'll be back on Thursday. Today's Tuesday, so we're leaving all the gear there and we'll be back. So I knew one thing going into this. I wanna start the short with music and I wanna start it with dynamic moving shots. I want that energy. Then as the film progresses, we'll lose the slider shots. I'm not gonna use the regular alphanumeric version of the shot list where you'd have scene one, shot A, and then the additional takes. Instead, I'm just gonna keep it all numeric this time around in case I'm having my actor slate something. So it'll be shot one, take one, or shot scene one, shot one, and then whatever take. So I'm actually just writing the script in my email. It's a sh such a short, like little short story deal. I'm not using any software for this. I'm not using Final Draft. I'm not using Celtics. This is probably print off a couple of copies. I'll go through with a highlighter and highlight all the dialogue that they have. And we're gonna keep it easy peasy mac and cheese. The short's probably only gonna be about two or three minutes, but I spent most of a day planning out the shots. Total, I have about 39 shots planned. 
I've also included reminders for wild sounds I need to record on set. I still haven't figured out what I want to do about the sandwich handoff business yet. Just gonna go with my best guess right now, but I'll figure it out on set tomorrow. So I'm gonna give you guys some gear highlights. I will leave links to all the stuff that I'm talking about in the description section. We're just keeping it minimal. Amazon Basics bag. I did a review on this bad boy, I think almost a year ago. I still dig it, I still use it. We're gonna be using the Canon 60D. I shot my feature length film on sound on it. Most of my YouTube videos I shot with this bad boy. Probably gonna be using this 50 mil for 90% of the shoot. I wanna move fast, I wanna move light. This guy's really sharp. The Canon 20 millimeter 2.8. I will probably be breaking this bad boy out at some point in the shoot when I need to get a little wider. Sigma 70 to 300. I mainly use this guy for the macro function, to be honest with you. We got the Rode Video Mic Pro. I'm only using this for reference sound. Sound. I'm using the H1 zooms and just throw this in your actor's pocket and you're pretty much GTG. Full disclosure, Side by Side sent me this, this power pack, I think it's called. Ever since I cracked this bad boy open, I kid you not, I have been using it religiously. Like you can pack this thing full to the brim. The elastic material, it's like, that's ridiculous. Just look at it. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. iRig, this is a lav mic. This is compatible with cell phones, laptops, most smart devices. The second mic we're using tomorrow is the Boya. This guy runs about 20 bucks on Amazon. Same thing. Only thing I don't like about it is like, this is a ridiculous amount of cable. Now we've got the newer 16 inch carbon fiber slider. I have not used it on a short film yet. So this is gonna be the native run for short film. And then we got the three pod tripod. Highly reviewed, a few of my friends have had it. I was looking for another tripod for travel and for like light running gun shoes like this one. So far, I've been happy with it. If you can get this guy for 80 bucks, it is a banging deal. And that is the gear highlights. I always get nervous before a shoot, you know, am I gonna get all the shots I need? Is this gonna work out? Is this gonna look like complete garbage? The usual jitters. I've only got two days to get everything I need to get, including ADR, because after that I lose Kate for two weeks. She's taking like a family trip to Ireland. If I don't get everything in these couple of days, I'm gonna miss the deadline. things. One, I'm shooting with an in-camera picture profile. In this case, I've got the camera set to faithful. Not doing any fancy color grades, no orange, no teal. Honestly, you guys, you don't have to do that with every film. I want what's coming out of the camera to be as close to the final image as possible with minimal tweaking and post. And then two, we're shooting everything out of order. Doing your thing here, we'll get a couple shots of that. I'm just giving you some blocking notes now before I forget. <laughs> So maybe you'll probably be on your knees there. Lighting. I did pre-light, but we still got some tweaking to do before we actually get started. <music> 120 D outside to kind of mimic what the sun was doing earlier, spilling over Gabs's shoulders. So we got one side light, other side light, and then boom, key from the back. Or if you wanna say one fill, this is more like a key here. Yeah, that's kinda of like a key light. And then this is like a big hot rim light simulating the sun. We will fight in the sun. Makes a huge difference. And then you turn them all off and you got darkness. Darkness, everyone, darkness. It's three point lighting for you. Without these lights, it would look a fright in here. I think for you, the ideal placement, either between the cleave or like up here. Yeah, all right, Kate, Kate. I'm gonna say roll sound. For you, that will mean to press record. And when you see that red light on, it's recording. And I'll ask, do you see the red? Tuck it away in your pocket. If I'm working with a new actor and they're not as familiar with this process, I like to pull them aside and give them a brief so they know kind of what to expect. Basically, you're my actor, but you're kind of my sound guy too, so we're gonna be working together on the audio thing. And let me see what this sounds like. 
There we go. EFG, HIJK, LMNOP. Okay. QRS, TV, W, X, Y, Z. First one we're gonna do is handing the initial sandwich to Gabby. Roll sound on your audio recorder. Oh, thank you. And when you set the sandwiches down, you'll set it here. Actually, you can probably scooch over it here this way. So I'll make it easier on Kate. When you slate this for me, you're gonna say shot one, seven, take one, and then clap right in front of your face. Camera is rolling. Slate. Shot one, scene seven, take one. Oh, did you see solid red on your recorder? Remember how I said I was having a lot of trouble trying to figure out like the whole sandwich handoff business? I figured out a solution. She just doesn't hand the sandwich back. Sandwich stays on the table. Way easier to shoot. All I gotta do is just like tilt up to her face. Simple. Can you toast this? One quick note. Head straight right, right there because I'm tilting right up to you. Okay, and like I was can, like this. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, I'm shooting a series, which means that you shoot multiple takes at a time. When I call action, we're gonna run through it multiple times before I call cut. It's gonna save a lot of time. Can you toast this? When you're taking the headphones off, uh -huh. it's so tight on you that it's like your head dips out of frame. Uh, you can do it more thank gradual. You. Yeah. Action, Kate. Can you toast this? Love it, we're gonna do one more for safety. Action on the hands. Too much jelly. Action on the hands. Too much jelly. You're projecting your voice a little bit? Bring the voice back. Too much jelly. Sweet. What feels better when you look at her or when you're looking at the sandwich? I like for you. looking at her. You like looking at her? Yeah, but okay. I don't have to. No, I'm trying to figure whatever works oh, for okay. you. Too much jelly. That was good, but I messed up on camera for that. Side. They're doing construction literally right outside the door. So we're getting nothing but trucks i may have to adr the entire thing possibly i don't know we'll see hopefully not hashtag uh what's a good hashtag real life because what i was thinking is you set it down and it's like you're getting ready to leave and do your own yeah, thing like and she's like can like, you toast this i, mean, I could do it as i at like a fake exit and then can you toast this come back when i say action you're turning and as she's turning just catch her with it can you toast this can you toast this can you toast this Scene one, shot six, take one. I guess you don't even need to kneel down, just look at her. All we really need here is a simple reaction. Doesn't have to be anything big. I realized I didn't need all this extra blocking. Actually, just look at her for a second. Yeah, literally just look at her. Gabby, don't even say anything. Let's just study Gabby. Look at her shoulders. Look at her laptop. Look at her hair. Adjust your hair. Boom, got it. The reaction to this, we'll just find it. I'll just record and we'll see what happens. Actually, just talk to her, but monologue to her. Tell her a story or something and then you just listen to her. Cool. And I think we can find a reaction in that that's super honest. Same thing here. All we need is like a little micro expression. So I'm throwing a variety of things at Kate here. Some of the things are related to the script. Some of them aren't. I'm just looking for options. Do it again. I'm just going to rehearse it for me. Yeah. Okay. Look at the sandwich. So I don't like all the pan and action I got going on with this shot. I really kind of want to simplify the camera movement here. So I adjusted Abby's blocking. She slides you the sandwich. I'm going to get that in another shot. You take the sandwich, take a peek at the sandwich right there in your lap. Like set it down, take a peek at it, I pan up to you. Yeah, so that's easier on me. Mm -hmm. And that looks natural on you. Three, two, take one. <laughs> I don't 
if you can like turn the sandwich around with one finger or something. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of something different, something just fun to look at. Rotating it with one hand. Or just like, it's uneven. Yeah, dude, that, that looks fun right there. And Gabs, Gabs again, just tell her a story. Once again, you come to me and you have Say something to make her laugh. Okay, check. Here we go. That's okay. Okay, uh, just eye Gabby, like size her up. Roll your eyes. You got it. It's in there. I want to open this film with like a super tight shot on Gabby for a couple of reasons. One, we're introducing a character for the first time. In this case, it's Gabby's character. I want to do that nice and tight and intimate. Two, I want to open the film with music. So showing the headphones in the shot, I want to make that parallel that she's listening to music. In the original shot, I racked focus all the way until Gabby's completely in focus. But in the final version of the film, I never achieved full focus. The particular company that the logo on the headphones was, was like a direct competitor of Aperture. And I don't know how that got by me. So I left it out. No, it's too high. We're trying to prop her laptop up. Yeah, that might be enough there. We're skimming right over the top of the laptop. We're propping it up with, what is this, like a bread tray or something? So that way we get this shot right here where we're just skimming right over the top of the laptop. Think about this uh, slider. You gotta make sure this like tightening knob down here is all the way loose or else you're gonna get like bumps right in the middle of the track. One thing to be aware of. Other than that, GTG. <laughs> The next few shots, I'm gonna use this Sigma 70 to 300 millimeter macro lens. I knew it was coming out. So I can't get back far enough to achieve the minimum focusing distance on this lens. So we're just gonna scooch the desk. I'm using the macro function on this lens to get super close to those little details like the writing and the typing. You can't get this close without a macro lens. Notebook. Now Duffy's gonna be the wide shot here. We'll break it up into pieces and we'll get through it. And we are on the 50 about one, two, 14 or 15 feet away from the actresses. Wide shots take time to set up. I'm giving myself about 20 minutes to tweak the lighting, set up the shot, and then after that, I'm gonna rehearse with the actors. The good thing, once you knock out the wide, the rest of the coverage usually doesn't take as long. The circled pillow there, can you put that between you two? Yeah. Lean forward, I'm just trying to see if I can see my light stand back there and if I even care. You can't even see enough of it to make out what it is. He looks like... Dimmable lights that you can control via remote. Game changer. Saves so much time. I'm working by myself, so if I had to like manually go up to each light and make adjustments, it would take like three times as long. I have not used all the lighting solutions out there, but the good thing about Aperture's lighting is you can like connect multiple lights to one remote. So we're gonna take this in pieces, literally. Here's the deal, the actors are seeing the script for the first time today. Usually when you shoot a wide shot of a scene, you run through the whole scene from beginning to end in each take. But I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm breaking the wide shot up into little pieces. You see all these little orange circles? Those are the chunks that I'm gonna shoot. Now this will take longer, but this allows me to focus on getting better performances because the actors only have to remember a few lines at a time. To pull this off, you really need to plan when you're gonna cut out of the wide shot ahead of time. An example, I know I'm gonna get Kate taking a bite of the sandwich in a close up. So in the last chunk of the wide shot, we start from right after she takes a bite. She never actually bites the bread in the shot, she just holds it up to her mouth. I walked the actors through the entire scene first, we made a few blocking adjustments, then we started shooting the wide shot. Why don't you show me how you want it? Making a PB&J. How about doing something with your instrument when you, with that yeah. line, you know? Like you sit down and maybe you're just like, why don't you like show me, you know, use your body. Action. Why don't you show me how you want it? That looks way better. It's way better than you just, just yeah. yeah. Especially in a wide. Yeah. What do we have here? We have a dump. No, that's, in, that's not a dump truck, is it? <laughs> I don't even know. Is that backhoe? We got a backhoe. It's not moving now, so I guess we can sneak a shot in there. Uh, we'll just cut. Holding for backhoe. <clears throat> Yeah. Go. Take cover! He's friggin' laughing at us like, right now. A movie right there. 
He's, yeah. he's, he's telling the other guy to come over here and watch. You have like GoPro strapped all over you. Like, what the hell? <laughs> Shoulders. Sweet, stand by. Oh yeah, I forgot to kill the fridge cause you know, kind of doing 20 jobs. This has no wheels on it. Uh, there we go. Yay. Next, we're moving for the close-ups. Hard parts are done. Things tend to move a lot quicker when you're shooting coverage. The wide took longer than I planned and I still got a bunch of shots left. I'm gonna need another day of shooting. Shutting it down for today. We're gonna pick it up on Saturday. Same thing, gonna leave all the lights and everything here, lock it up. six hours that we were there today we were actually only shooting for about four hours the other two hours was like setup time between shots rehearsing with actors miking actors etc so tonight i will probably start editing and then we'll you know we'll see what we got Disclaimer. So there's gonna be a lot of handling noise with the GoPro audio today. I had some technical issues. So I cut about 10 shots off the shot list. Based on the edit, I'm finding that the film kind of wants to be something else, and I like this new direction. Originally, I planned to get two over the shoulder shots of the entire last scene on the couch, and more close ups of the sandwich business. Didn't need it. The wide shots were actually compelling enough to carry most of the last half of the film. What's up? I think we can work around it. Sweet. We've only got 11 shots. The other day we did like 25 or 26. We don't have the sunny day we did before, so the name of the game is just avoid showing the windows. It's a good thing most of our shots are tight today. 11 shots. If we average about 10 minutes a shot, we'll be done in 10 minutes a shot, 11 shots. Yeah, 110, 111. I'm so mad, <laughs> it's too early. <laughs> Pop right back down. I'm gonna take a picture. A couple pictures. Jeez. You're gonna need some thumbnails. I cannot tell you how many times I've forgotten to take pictures on set for thumbnails. It's crucial. You need high res photos for YouTube thumbnails. You need high res photos for any festival promotional materials. Just in general, it's good to have high res photos. If you don't have a set photographer, you're gonna need to sneak in some still somewhere when you can. Eight, one. Stand by. I feel like I should be on my knees. On your knees? Yeah. Do you want my eyes here? Like that? Yeah. While you're closing it, I'm trying to think of what you could say. Um, yeah, just like God's plan. Yeah, something like that, yeah. As you're gone, it's like, all right, easy. Like, oh, God's plan. <laughs> Next one, you ready? Sometimes you find the best ideas while you're shooting. You can't be afraid to deviate from your script. A little context. The day before, we were rocking out to a Drake song. God's plan. And like any good song, it got stuck in everybody's heads and we figured it might be fun to work that into the short somewhere is like our little inside joke. Trail off where you're like, God's plan, God's plan. God's plan, God's plan, God's plan, God's plan. <laughs> we just did wild audio while she puts the sandwich together and I will add it later. It's funny. Shot's a little too tight, so we're gonna swap lenses and do a 20. Little tape for the lens flare. Go ahead. 
Nine. Action when you're ready. Country. Swiss cut. Keep going. We'll probably need another sandwich. One's toasted and one's not. Should I go ahead and toast this guy? I don't know if you're gonna like this. Is that guy <laughs> Like a bowl. Crap. We have another loaf of bread, but we've got wheat all over it, and that doesn't match the original bread. We're gonna try scraping the wheat off. So healthy. This is filmmaking right now. So we, we got to make another sandwich. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's all good. That's the Illuminati cut. That's what that is. I can probably cut away to you. Yeah, I'm one of my Yeah, life. your reactions. We'll do one more since we have the time, but I, I have a fail safe in my brain now, so we can cut around. We can cut around the Illuminati cut. Excellent. It's ready. It's ready. It's ready. Stop eating it, but I am so sorry. Already. This bread is noticeably lighter. <laughs> And then what like, are you trying uh, to say about this bread? <laughs> and as you're talking about the cut, we cut to this bread, which is like two shades darker. Worst case scenario, if we mess it up, we can cut out of it. We'll be aight. All right, let's do it. Cut number three didn't work out. Wait, wait. So we got we got the Kanye West cut happening. One side's bigger than the other side, so <laughs> we're gonna make some magic happen in the editing room. We'll knock the close-ups of setting the peanut butter and jelly down first, since that's easy. And then the cutting board, we'll cut, we'll knock those out. And then we'll do the close up of your hands applying peanut butter on the bread cake. And then, uh, Should we toast some more bread? Crap, yeah. The Yeezy cut. The Yeezy cut. I should have called it the Yeezy cut. Sound is rolling, speeding. So we'll just say shot three, three, snap. Action. 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 One more for safety. Action. Hashtag boo Cutting and cutting. Rolling. Insert shots are done. Close up. This done, this done. Traditional boom boom. This tripod is dope. This slider here is about 50 bucks. This is uh, not their longest. It's I think it's probably their shortest, but for film stuff. It's a pretty good mm -hmm. pretty good length now This is uh, a Joby head off a little gorilla pod little mini tripod legs that I have in order to uh, articulate my camera here. I Need some kind of head for that. Otherwise, you're just sticking the camera on the slider and there's no way to there's no way to move the camera around, yeah. I just mostly leave the slider on the camera, and if I ever decide to do a sliding shot, it's already there, and it's it's so small that it doesn't really get in the way of anything. Camera's rolling, six, and action. I'm gonna get wild sounds of you getting up off the couch. I'm just getting all those all those sounds. Ooh, it's so quiet now. Wild sounds. Gabby yeah, shifting to and fro. On the couch. I'll just kind of guide you through it. Wild sound, Gabby cutting bread. That's the cut we needed right there. Wow. Look at that. That's beautiful. Redemption. Take two, Gabby cutting bread. Action. So we're all done with this setup. Now we're going to light back there, set up for that shot, and then we'll be done. Let's play it. see you in the back Kate I can rack focus between uh, Gabby and you it's gonna be super sick so we're on the 50 millimeter lens obviously the back kitchen is it's a distance this gives you an idea of how far away I was to get the shot you guys saw scooch uh, this way a little more and so I'm gonna get three shots of you just kind of moving back here going in the fridge you're just kind of doing your thing so we got the 120d bouncing off the wall giving us a nice wide wash of light across the front of the kitchen here 
The last few slider shots I wasn't happy with. I think the camera plate wasn't tightened all the way down, so I got like a lot of slop in the shot. But I'm losing Gabby in three minutes, so I didn't really have time to tighten it. I only need like a small piece of it anyway. Also, I completely forgot to turn the hallway light off here. I'm getting mixed color temperatures. The shot would have looked a lot better had I turned that sucker off. It's just in time. Gabs had to leave, but we got all the shots in. How long? Where are we shooting? How long? Like two hours? It must have been closer to two hours. Closer to eight. Well, about two hours. It's about 45 minutes set up, two hours of shooting, 10 shots. It's about what I calculated. 10 minutes per shot equates to 110 minutes, which is almost two hours. But we got it. May leave my gear here one more night so I can finish editing, and then I'm gonna look everything over and make sure we don't need any pickup shots. So we do have to get something. I don't have to lug all of this stuff like back out here. It's locked, it's safe, and secure. These are all the puppies we use as props, man. This guy here didn't make it. So we went through, what, three sandwiches? Two? Two-ish, three-ish? Oh, there's a bunch over here too? So we probably went through today six sandwiches, which is like 12 pieces of bread. This was a full loaf of bread when we started. Just then, I'm also releasing Unsound today. It's 11.23, probably gonna drop it at like one o'clock. By the time you see this, Unsound will have already been released. Kate, Kate killed it today. Handling business. She's starting a YouTube channel, y'all, so you gotta look out for that. This video is more about the shooting part, but I'll give you some highlights. I had to get some ADR from Gabby, small stuff, all line set off camera. So we'll add the line one to one ratio, jelly to peanut butter. Hold your breath when you when you do it. Okay. And we'll just see if that does anything different. Okay. We got them. That's it. I went back to location and got some room tone and ambience. Fly away, fly away. Fly away with me, it's time to fly away, fly away. Good, to you. Good luck on your trip. Thank you, yeah. When I'm doing these run and gun shoots where it's just me, I need portable gear. Everything I've got either fits in my trunk or fits in my back seat. I have a 120D here, I've got another 120D down here, and I've got two of the light storm panels inside here. All four of these lights fit in my trunk. That's pretty amazing. Leave a light footprint. Move light, move fast. I did some foley biting bread. Huh? Hopefully you be nice and quiet. You're gonna be nice and quiet, huh? So I can record this foley, huh? Speeding. Getting like uh, five or six takes. One of them will line up. I think we got it. Done. That's actually me. Here are some shots that didn't make it in the final cut. I cut Kate's reaction shots in the first two scenes. Didn't really need them. I cut a sandwich sliding shot. It slowed down the pace. I cut insert shots of the ingredients and cutting board before the last scene. They just felt unnecessary. I shaved a few lines here and there either for performance or pacing. Mistakes. I shot most of this at a 3.2 aperture, so the depth of field, kind of small. You can burn that with a small monitor and no focus assist features. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna miss the mark a few times. Not the end of the world. I had to sharpen a few shots in post by like 15%. I couldn't I couldn't save all of them. I underestimated how much time it would take to work with the actors, and although I'm happy with the performances I got, I ended up having to kind of like rush things along a little bit to stay on schedule. And the end result, you make mistakes. I will leave a link below to a gear profile. You'll find all the gear that I used in this short and all the gear that I mentioned there. I hope you guys found this useful, and if you did, you know maybe I'll do another one. Let me know in the comments. I do believe that's all that I got for you. Debrit out.